All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Steph Cook. I am so excited to have all you guys here with me tonight. I'm just going to say hi and get in some quick face time with you guys before we jump right into all of this awesome content that I have to share. So thank you for joining me on a Sunday. I know that, you know, Sunday nights can sometimes be crazy when you're prepping for your work week, but so fantastic that you were able to join me and that we're able to have this great conversation tonight. So for those of you who have been on my webinars before, you know that I really love to get us started with a truth bomb. And uh, this is courtesy of Danielle Laporte. If you don't know her, she is amazing. Uh, check out her website, follow her on Facebook. She is fantastic, one of my favorite writers and definitely a catalyst for me in uh, changing my life. So total inspiration and I picked a card today and I know I show you them every time and you can't really read them and it's probably backwards but they're gorgeous cards and this one says freedom always follows truth and I think that that is so appropriate for our conversation today you know when you recognize that there's something wrong in your life or that something is not feeling the way that you want it to uh, there's a moment of truth and there's an honesty in there and uh, the freedom that you're looking for, the, the happiness and the health that we're going to talk about today, you know, that comes from recognizing that truth and being honest about what's showing up in, in our lives and what we want to show up in our lives. So a uh, really cool start to today for sure. Um, freedom always follows truth. So let's let that guide us and guide our conversation. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to a screen share. So bear with me for a second while I get my uh, tech all set up. Um, all right. I know it probably looks funky right now. Uh, okay, so let's jump right in. So if you don't know me, you're probably wondering, you know, who is Steph Cook? Who is this chick? And uh, this is me right here with my husband, Mike. Um, we're truly um, a great pair. And uh, we've been together for quite a long time. We tell everybody that it feels like we've been together forever. And uh, some days it definitely does feel like that. And some days it feels like we barely know each other, which is always the exciting part of marriage, right? And this is on our recent trip to Hawaii, which was just an absolutely incredible trip and something that I couldn't ever have imagined being able to do just a few short years ago. So, um, you know, just goes to show you what you can create in your life if you're ready to. So I want to tell you a little bit about me. So I am an environmental engineer. I'm trained as an engineer. I have both a bachelor's and a master's in engineering, and I'm uh, professionally licensed as an engineer as well. I have over 10 years of professional experience. I've worked from everything from you know environmental consulting to working in IT to working for the government, the city of Philadelphia and the public sector, working in education, I've worked in retail, you know, I have really done it all. And if you saw anything that I was sharing about this webinar before, you'll know that that is really kind of a key to my story that, you know, I job hopped a lot looking for happiness and looking for something that was going to fill this need in me to really do something amazing in the world. And what I realized was that it couldn't be something external that that needed to come from me. And that's something we're going to talk a little bit more about as we get further into our webinar today. So I describe myself as a corporate burnout survivor. I'm going to talk a little bit more on the next slide about, you know, me, what that meant for me and what that looks like. But I'm sure a lot of you here can can relate to that idea of of corporate burnout and um, really wondering if there is another side or if this is just the way that life is now. And I'm here to tell you that there absolutely is another side. I believe that there has to be in order for us to really do any kind of meaningful work and contribute in any real way, that there has to be that other side of, of self-care and of health and of happiness. So uh, it's really, um, you know, a twofold process, and we're going to talk more about that. 
now I have kind of leveraged my experience and my passions and I work as a certified wellness and lifestyle coach and I support women like you. So if you're here, it probably means that you feel like you have a purpose and you have passion and maybe you're not living out that purpose um, and you're frustrated with that or maybe you are living that purpose but it is really um, impacting the rest of your life in a negative way and you want to find a better way to kind of bring some balance to your life or, or bring you know the that equal side of kind of hustle and flow to your life as we call it um, and you know if if you are in either one of those camps you're gonna get a lot out of today's webinar so I'm so excited that you're here and also on a personal note, so I shared already about my husband, Mike. Uh, I'm a wife. I am also a yogi. I teach yoga and Payo, which is a uh, Pilates and yoga inspired workout. I am a CrossFitter, which is something, you know, if you'd asked me a couple years ago, I never would have claimed to be. Um, but I've actually found um, found myself and, and learned a lot about myself actually while lifting weights, which sounds so crazy to me. But um, I've also learned a lot about myself on my yoga mat, so it takes both sides. And I am a very proud cat mama. We've got two fur babies here, which we treat like our own children. Uh, so that's just a little bit about me. Now let me share my story with you. So I would describe myself as kind of the quintessential corporate ladder climber. You know, I have always, since I was a young girl, even, you know, when I was in elementary school and um, in middle school and, and through high school, I really, you know, I dreamed of making a big impact. I was one of those kids who said, you know, I want to change the world one day. I want to do something really amazing and I want to be known for something. And I carried that with me, you know, throughout my entire life. Um, I was definitely an overachiever throughout my entire entire life. Sometimes, um, you know, through really hustling, and sometimes just um, through being, you know, kind of in the right place at the right time. Or um, maybe that's not the right way to put it. But um, you know, I, I did really well in school, and, and some of those things just came naturally to me. I guess is is a better way to describe it. So um, really taking advantage of those things that came naturally to me, and. Um, so when I got into the professional world, you know, I took that kind of work ethic and I took that drive and that passion with me. And I said, you know, I want to be known for something. I want to be um, a really powerful woman in the workplace. And um, I worked really hard to make that happen. What that meant was that um, by the time I was 26, I was managing a million dollar client portfolio. And I know this is very industry specific. It can even be very company specific, but the company that I was working for, this was a huge deal. I was the youngest person by at least five years to be doing this. So it was a, it was a really big deal. I had a lot of responsibility and it was um, really exciting and I had a lot of opportunity for growth and a lot of opportunity for learn for learning. But it definitely came at a cost. It came at the expense of working, you know, 60 to 80 hours a week. I was absolutely tied to my laptop. I was tied to my work email. I was going into the office on weekends. I was the last person to leave at night. And, you know, aside from that, it was taking a toll on my marriage. You know, my husband at the, he didn't tell me at the time, but he told me after the fact that uh, he hated coming home to me because I was so miserable and so difficult to be around. And he was actually considering leaving me. And that was really hard for me to hear, but it is uh, a reality. And I think it's a reality that a lot of us face and we don't necessarily even realize it. And uh, it was also taking a toll on my health. You know, I put on um, double digit pounds while I was working. I um, didn't take care of myself. I was pretty much living off of Starbucks soy lattes and pizza delivery and cliff bars and, um, you know, any kind of sugary treat that I could eat to boost my energy, I was like all about that stuff. And that took a real toll on my body and it took a toll on um, my ability to be effective at my job. What this meant that I was, it, I was burnt out, I was unhappy and I was unhealthy. And I just, uh, I, I woke up one day and I said, you know, this isn't the life that I want 
to live. I really am passionate about making an impact in this world, but I can't do it like this. This doesn't feel good. This doesn't feel right. This is not what I had dreamed of for myself. So I left that job. And if you were in one of my previous webinars, you know that, you know, it's not necessarily about quitting the job or not, but for me, that was at the time it felt like my only option. So that's what I did. And then I spent the next probably three to four years really job hopping, looking for that fit. Like I talked about before, you know, I tried teaching, I tried working as a software tester. I tried working as a data analyst. I tried working, you know, uh, in, in retail sales. I tried working for the city and every single time I found myself frustrated and unhappy, whether it was because I wasn't challenged enough, whether it was because I didn't like the work environment, whether it was because I didn't like the work or I wasn't getting paid enough or, you know, I still was stressed out and unhappy and, and not being able to take time to care for myself. I couldn't find that fit, as I say, right? I was looking for this dream job that I just, I landed there and everything was like sunshine and roses and rainbows and unicorns. And that really just, it didn't happen. And I had this kind of moment of clarity or, you know, I don't even know if it was necessarily a moment, but what I, what I came to realize was that it wasn't about finding this dream job or, you know, finding this dream industry and whatever. It was about recognizing what I needed for myself to make myself happy and healthy and to go out and create that for myself. It wasn't about finding the perfect job. It was about creating the reality that I wanted. And, um, you know, that sounds really simple. And in some ways it can be, um, even coming to that moment was like, oh my gosh, like, I feel like this huge weight is lifted, but there is, um, you know, there are a lot of, of years of kind of like beliefs and, and, um, limiting beliefs and things that were holding me back to get to that point where I really needed to get to, to be able to live this, uh, this dream life as I call it. And, you know, it's totally, totally possible to do that. I've done that work and I'm here to share more about that with you today, about some of the things that you can do and some of the things that are holding you back right now that you can change and immediately see impacts. Uh, but I want you to know that this is a process. It doesn't necessarily happen overnight, but uh, the important thing is that you start to make some changes for yourself. And we're going to talk more about that soon. And so, I think this is a good time to stop and say, you know, why I do this. People ask me that a lot. Um, you know, coming from an engineering background, I was always well paid and I always had um, kind of career stability and things like that. Uh, but that wasn't what I wanted. I wanted something that um, really fed my passion and, and fed my purpose. But beyond that, you know, I've recognized that now you know, my story and what I was feeling and what I was thinking and what was happening to um, my life outside of work uh, is not unique to me. So many women are going through the same thing where we're really trying to to live both sides and we're struggling because it's hard and nobody teaches us the right things to do and nobody teaches us how to care for ourselves and we are just kind of going through what we've been told for forever which is kind of like just keep plugging along and you know um, be a strong woman and you know put in your time and pay your dues uh, but there's a whole other side to this that i want women to see because it's important to have both sides to really be successful and to really leave your impact on the world. And so that is the big reason why I do this because I know that women can make a huge impact on the world, but they can't do it if they don't learn to care for themselves as well. So a few things that I want to note as we're getting started here. So if for some reason your screen freezes, just go ahead and, and click refresh and uh, it should bounce right back, hopefully. There is uh, a chat box on the right side, I believe, to, to ask questions. Um, you should see it there. So you can type in your questions at any time and I'm gonna go back to um, 
face to face at the end and you can ask any questions that you have and I also have some questions that were submitted via email so I'll go through them as well. There is approximately a 10 second delay so uh, if you ask a question and they don't respond right away or whatever, you know, don't stress, we're on a little bit of a delay so just keep that in mind as well. Next I want you to know, you know, I am going to be sharing a lot of content so you're gonna have a replay to watch over again um, as you see fit, as you need. You know, if maybe there's something that really speaks to you and you wanna hear again, you have the opportunity to listen to it at your leisure. And the last thing that I wanna put out there is that, you know, I am a health coach, I'm a life coach, but I am not your doctor, right? I am not gonna make any specific medical recommendations. If you have, you know, any specific, um, you know, medical limitations or anything like that, you know, before you make any major nutrition or lifestyle changes, you should speak with your doctor first. Um, we're all smart, educated women here, so um, I don't wanna, wanna beat a dead horse with this, but um, I just wanna make sure that we're all on the same page with, uh, you know, making smart decisions for ourselves. So know when you need to reach out for more help, and um, I will just leave it at that, okay? So our agenda. So first and foremost, I'm gonna give you some really amazing content. I'm so excited to share this with you. Uh, this is, some of it is stuff that I've never shared before, and I've definitely never shared this much content all in one webinar. So it's gonna be really awesome to go through that. Um, then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna tell you exactly how to fix the things that you're struggling with. You know, whether it's that you're feeling disconnected to your work or you're struggling with those 60 to 80 hour work weeks uh, and you're not taking care of yourself, whether it's, you know, you are frustrated that you can't seem to take the weight off even though you put it on so freaking easily. Um, or, you know, if it's that you're exhausted all the time, you know, I talked to so many women, it used to be that um, people were having like that afternoon crash. But what I have found is that a lot of the women that I work with, you know, they make it through the workday because they're like, um, kind of have that adrenaline flowing, I guess, or whatever. And then they get home from work and they just completely crash out and um, forget about having a personal life if that is the case, right? Um, so, you know, if you're struggling with that, we're going to talk about that as well. Now, this call is about uh, sharing really valuable content with you and um, getting you the answers that you need. This call is not about me, you know, prescribing a, a specific diet or a specific product that you need to use. You know, I'm not going to tell you that if you go vegan, that'll change your life. Or um, if you just take this special pill, everything will be fantastic. That's not what I'm about. I'm not going to be, you know, um, salesy or, or slimy in any way. Um, this is about sharing great content with you and then um, telling you all about what you can do to make some changes. After that, I'm gonna give you kind of an overview of you know, what wellness and lifestyle coaching is all about and what specifically working with me is all about. So I find a lot of women don't even know what coaching is and how it can really benefit them. And we're gonna close out with a Q&A at the end. So definitely stay on uh, to be able to ask your questions and, and get answers to your specific questions. All right. So as we get started, you know, I want to talk a little bit about then and now. You know, I described kind of my past and how this has led me uh, to where I am today and how I struggled for a long time. Um, but I think that sometimes pictures can tell a better story. And so I have a few before and afters that I want to show you guys. And uh, this first series um, I find really interesting. So this 2009 photo is bef right before I quit um, that really stressful engineering job, this picture right here. And uh, you can't really see it in the photo, but I'm out at happy hour with my coworkers. That was kind of like, you know, our regular thing. Um, I'd like to say that it only happened on Fridays, but it happened a lot more often than that. And um, 
you know, I'm not here to tell you that happy hour is bad, very far from it. I still love happy hour. But one of the things that I've recognized for myself and that I see in a lot of the people that I work with is that we use things like alcohol um, to really escape when we're unhappy. And it's not necessarily that you have um, a drinking problem, like I don't think that I have a drinking problem or that I'm an alcoholic or anything like that. But I definitely have used um, alcohol as a tool to manage stress and to, um, you know, hide some of my unhappiness. Uh, so this is me in 2009. And uh, just a few months before I quit that job, uh, fast forward to this next photo, 2012. Again, look, beer in the hand, again at happy hour. Um, you know, I look at this and I see, you know, a little bit of a different person. I, I look a little bit more healthy. You know, my skin tone looks healthy. This is when I really started to focus on my nutrition and, and really get a grasp on um, how to take care of myself while managing my career. And this last picture is uh, just this last summer. And um, my husband and I were on our way to a concert and we were um, just really happy and having a great time. Uh, but this is, you know, the epitome of how I feel right now. You know, I feel free, I feel light, I feel healthy, and I feel happy to be where I am. You know, I feel like, you know, my life isn't necessarily all coming up daisies, but um, I have the tools to be able to deal with anything that comes my way. And, um, you know, I'm not hiding behind a happy hour anymore. I'm not um, struggling to identify what it is that I want out of my life. So a couple more for you. And again, um, some interesting before and after. So, uh, you know, me here again, partying, um, smoking a cigarette here. I wasn't necessarily a, a big smoker, but I was an occasional smoker when I was drinking and um, switched it up a few years ago, enjoying my green juice. And again, you can definitely, I think, see changes in, in um, my skin tone and in my general, um, you know, how my hair looks and all of that. Um, and then this last picture here, I think, is really telling as well. Um, so this is um, probably one of my heaviest weights. I've never been, you know, super overweight, but I've definitely been at a place where I have felt uncomfortable in my own skin. And this is a great example of that time. I don't have a lot of pictures from that time because I just was uncomfortable getting in front of the camera. Um, but that was definitely a time where I was feeling really lost. I was feeling like I didn't know, you know, where my life was going. I was doing everything that everyone told me I should do, but um, it never really felt right. It felt like I was living for somebody else and I was um, using food and I was using alcohol to really hide my unhappiness. And uh, then we have this picture on the right, which is uh, me again, just last summer, you know, feeling like I had finally found my place in the world and like I understood what it was like to, to feel healthy and to take care of myself and to be at a comfortable weight and um, to really feel proud of the person that I was and not like I was hiding anymore. And uh, so there's definitely, um, you know, that's a big theme of what we're gonna talk about today is, you know, really stepping into a space where you are owning your life and you're owning the choices that you're making. It's a really powerful place to be, but it's someplace that a lot of us have been taught not to be, um, whether we consciously realize that or not, um, especially as women, uh, we are very often taught to kind of um, go with the flow and be supportive of other people and um, not to be too aggressive and aggression is looked at as bad, you know, um, but, by doing so, we really lose sight of who we are. And so we wanna get back to that place. So why am I sharing this with you? Why does this all matter? What I want you to recognize is that I have been exactly where you are. If you're stuck in a dead end job or if you're just feeling lost and like there's something else that, um, that your life was meant for something else, uh, if you're struggling with your health, know that I have been there. Um, also know that, you know, there is nothing special about me. There's nothing lucky about me. You know, nobody um, handed me um, my dream lifestyle on a silver platter. You know, I'm not, I wasn't raised in a rich family where I could kind of go out and, um, 
you know, just do whatever I wanted. I did the work, I put in the time, I put in the energy, I put in the effort to really figure out what it was that was causing me to feel so unhappy and unhealthy. And um, I fixed those problems. And now I have ma maintained those results. I also want you to know that I have tried literally everything under the sun. Um, from a weight loss perspective, you know, I've done juice cleanses, I've done detoxes, I've um, tried a whole host of different workouts. I used to run on the treadmill for hours upon hours upon hours and never see results in my body. Um, I have done it all. And um, it's really led me to learn that there is no one size fits all. And we're going to talk more about that a little bit later, but um, that there also, there is a unique solution that's available for you and i'm here to help you find it you know my as i was going through kind of this process of self discovery discovery my friends and family they thought i was crazy and i think a lot of them kind of thought i was a lost cause i can remember um it being like a joke in my family it was like oh stephanie started a new job again um and it made me really uncomfortable um I have never been one to settle and um, I felt like I was being forced to settle or that I should um, that I should settle and um, that wasn't okay and it wasn't okay to be made to feel that way and I want you to know that um, if you are worried about what your friends or family are gonna think when you start to make lifestyle changes <laughs> know that I've been there as well and that can be one of the most challenging things about this whole process but uh, the important part is having an outside support system and that's something that I had and um, something that you can create for yourself as well and lastly, I just want you to know that, you know, if I can do this, trust me, you can absolutely do this too. It is totally uh, a manageable process. There is a lot of, um, you know, really simple things that you can do to start to change your path. So I want to I want to stop for a second now and I want to ask you, you know, what do you want from this call? What was it that uh, caused you to to reach out and to to sign up for this call today? What is it that you want to learn and what is it that you really feel like needs to change in your life? And I'm going to just go through a couple of bullets here, which might be some things that maybe you are struggling with. Right. So have you ever experienced being disconnected from your work, struggling to get ahead, or frustrations with your professional growth? Have you struggled with cravings, overeating, dehydration, body aches, headaches? Do you have low energy or energy dips during the day or after work? And then stress, anxiety, mood swings, or trouble sleeping. So uh, if you have any of those things, you know, I want you to just take an opportunity, reflect now. I'm going to give you like 10 seconds or so before I move on, just to really think about what it is that you want to learn today and be open to, uh, to hearing the things that you need to hear and to hearing the right things. All right, so let's dig right in, shall we? Let's get right into the top five things that are keeping you unhealthy and unhappy and really what you can do about it. I want you to know that uh, you, I absolutely, in my, in my heart and my soul, I believe that you deserve to be healthy, happy, and successful. This isn't something that is, you know, unattainable for, for us. This is something that I believe is a right, that we as women have the right to feel this way. And um, so I, I wanna start off with that. I want you to know that this is something that I think that you deserve, and I am excited to, to be able to help you get there. So reason number one, you're out of alignment. So, so often I talk to, uh, I talk to women who just feel like they are stuck and they're going through the motions and they kind of, when they stop and take a look around, they feel like 
how did I get here and what am I doing here? You know, they have lost sight of their dreams and they have lost sight of their values. They're doing work that is not necessarily aligned with their values. So often when this happens, you know, we are in victim mode and we're feeling like, again, like, how did I get here? Why, what am I doing here? And um, who got me to this place? Because this is not something that I wanted for myself. So often we lose a sen our sense of passion and our sense of purpose about the work that we're doing. You know, again, it feels kind of like we're just going through the motions. We're just kind of a cog in that corporate wheel. And we want to feel unique and we want to feel valued and we want to feel like the things that we're doing are um are improving the world. And uh, it can be really easy to lose that sense of passion and that sense of purpose. And then the last piece is, you know, especially for women, I hear this all the time and it, it just breaks my heart. There's just this, uh, this overwhelming guilt that we all feel. And I think we feel, we just feel it more than men. Sorry if there are men listening in, I apologize guys, but, um, we just do, uh, you know, as women, I think we feel guilty when we're working and we're not home with our families and we're not spending time with our loved ones and we're not, you know, being the perfect girlfriend or spouse or, or mom. And on the flip side, you know, we feel like when we're having a little bit of downtime, like, oh, like maybe I should be working or, um, you know, I have this this thing that I um, really need to do, like I, sh I shouldn't just sit here and relax. Like we have this overwhelming guilt that just um, drives us to keep doing instead of really evaluating what it is that we're doing and why we're doing it. I have this quote here on the bottom, which I absolutely love, again, from uh, Danielle Laporte. It is from her book, The Firestarter Sessions, and it says, it's not the imbalances of life that will get you down. It's doing meaningless things that aren't taking you where you want to go. The more you pursue what you're passionate about at any given time, the less friction and more fluidity you'll have in your life. And I want you to just take a second and really think about that. You know, if you were truly living your passion in a way that you felt connected to, uh, would, would things feel challenging and would they feel difficult or would they start to feel easy? Would things start to flow? Because we wanna get you to that place where things are flowing. That's the goal. Reason number two, you are exhausted. You know, I talked about it before about how I speak to a lot of women who share that, you know, they get home from work and they just totally crash out. And uh, that is so, so common. And there are a few reasons why that's happening. The first is this whole idea of being busy versus being productive. And we're in this culture where we're um, constantly being bombarded by information and by emails and we're always tied into work and connected and um, focusing on, you know, being, being there, being the person in the office or being the um, person always responding to emails. And uh, there's a really big difference between being the person who is busy all the time and being the person who is productive and doing the things that they need to do to get ahead. That is a huge, huge distinction. And when we start to get burnt out, it's when we're in that busy mode. It's when we're just doing things kind of for the sake of doing them and for being the person who's doing something. So if you are one of those doing people, um, and, and I don't say that in any mean way because I am absolutely one of those people, you know, it's, it's a good opportunity once you recognize that to step back and to start to evaluate, you know, is this really a good use of my time or how could I better use my time? Um, and I have to actively do that as well because I am one of those go, go, go busy people. So um, something that you kind of consciously have to cultivate. The next reason that we're all exhausted is because we're always chasing that next thing. You know, I can remember when I was, uh, when I was climbing that corporate ladder, it was always, it wasn't about where I was at right now and really mastering where I was at. It was about getting to that next level. So it was about getting to that next promotion or for me, you know, it was um, 
oh, should I like go get a graduate degree? Should I go get a PhD? Should I go get another professional certification? You know, what do I need to do to make myself stand out, to make myself look better? Instead of being present in the moment now and recognizing that there are things to learn here and now and that uh, by constantly focusing my energy forward that I was really limiting myself and I was also just wearing myself out. The next, next is that afternoon or, or the after work slump like we all, we've already talked about. Uh, then getting into that tired but wired feeling. So I talk about this a lot and uh, I'm sure a lot of you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, you'll be just exhausted at the end of the day. You know, it'll be bedtime and you'll go to bed. Um, but then your mind will just literally be racing, you know, whether it is about all the things that didn't get done that day or, you know, replaying conversations in your head or planning conversations for the next day, you know, thinking about like, oh crap, I forgot to put the laundry in the dryer, you know, whatever it might be, your mind just starts going crazy, right? And it um, keeps you from sleeping, it keeps you from sleeping well, and uh, it really is this kind of vicious, vicious cycle. Next is dehydration. So uh, most of us don't actually even realize that we're dehydrated or how dehydrated we are. Um, you know, if you, so let me put this into context for you. You should be drinking half of your body weight in ounces of water. So for example, if you weigh 150 pounds, you should be drinking 75 ounces of water a day. Now, most of us are probably not drinking that much water. And um, when you're dehydrated, it the first thing that happens is that you um, get really tired. It can also manifest itself in food cravings and, um, you know, slowing down kind of like your, your mental capacity so you're not necessarily as sharp on the uptake as you should be and a whole host of other things, but really um, fatigue is the first thing that happens when we start to get dehydrated. Um, so that right there is a super quick fix for you if you are feeling exhausted to try and um, up your water intake. The next is caffeine and sugar. So again, you know, these are things that um, I used to use to prop me up all the time when I was feeling exhausted in the afternoon and I needed a little bit of a pick me up. You know, I would go run out and grab a cup of coffee or um, go get a cookie or, you know, go to the receptionist's desk and, and, and grab a lollipop um, and get that kind of quick burst of sugar. And I think, you know, um, we all recognize that with that with that caffeine high or that sugar high, there comes a crash afterwards. And it kind of feeds again into a vicious cycle where to get out of that slump, out of that crash, you need more caffeine or you need more sugar. And uh, so that is something that, you know, it can seem like it's a pick me up, but it's actually dragging you down. So next, this should be, you know, no surprise to anybody at all, right? Reason number three, you are stressed. Now, so many of us think that stress is just a way of life. You know, this is just the way life is nowadays. And um, I've got to tell you that I think you're wrong. Um, now, I'm not going to sit there and lie to you and say that my life is completely 100% stress-free, but... Um, there are a lot of techniques that you can use to either reduce your stress, to simplify your life, um, or even to change your perspective. So if you have ever been in a situation where you have two people that are responding to the same situation and one totally loses their mind, totally stressed out, and the other one is kind of like, oh, well, you know, okay, this is a problem, but I'll figure it out. Um, you want to be that person who just has kind of that um, I'll figure it out approach, right? And it is all about the perspective that each of those people take. Now, this is not necessarily an easy thing. This is a learned skill, uh, but it is absolutely 
in part about perspective. Um, there are other things that are out of our control, but again, that is when the kind of lifestyle design and the, and the simplifying can really play a huge role in reducing the amount of stress in your life. And I wanna just share a little bit about what stress actually does to you because you know the stress in your life, it can cause all of these other um, five or other four things that we're talking about that are making us unhealthy and unhappy. So um, stress contributes to weight gain. Um, it's been a um, shown fact that stress um, increases cortisol in your body, which is what helps you hold on to fat. Um, so, you know, not something that is uh, beneficial to us, um, you know, it also can lead us to stress eat, which again is a source of weight gain for a lot of women. Um, additionally, it decreases our nutrient absorption, meaning that you can be um, eating healthy foods, but your body is not necessarily absorbing the nutrients. So maybe it's forcing you uh, to eat more because your body is not getting what it needs, or maybe you are just nutrient depleted. And again, that can be leading to fatigue. It can be leading to burnout. Um, so really, you know, not a good place to be. It also decreases our immunity, meaning that you're more likely to, uh, to get sick, and uh, that is never good. None of us like to be sick. It uh, decreases our, our sleep and specifically our deep sleep that we all really need. Again, feeding into that tiredness. It also makes us um, really struggle to stay focused. You know, we're in this world where multitasking is viewed as this fantastic skill and um, you know, I've been reading some some job postings lately, and you know, multitasking always comes up as like um, critical skill that an applicant must have. And um, honestly, multitasking is literally the worst thing. <laughs> it um, it causes it causes stress. It um, decreases our focus. It decreases our work output and the quality of our work output because uh, when you are moving thing to thing to thing, you can't concentrate and put your best effort forward on the thing that you're working on right now. And um, I don't know if you've ever realized that or not, you know. But when you take a step back and really think about it, what you'll recognize is that, oh yeah, like the times when I have to put blinders on, put my headphones on, shut my phone off, and you know, do a solid hour of focused work on this one activity. That's when like the magic happens. That's when I have those these brilliant moments of clarity, and uh, my work is just like shining. But on the other hand, when you're kind of going through your day to day and you're trying to get work done, you know, um, and oh, you get pinged with an email and it distracts you and and it kind of takes you down a, a whole other path. Um, so in a nutshell, stress uh, definitely decreases our focus. And then uh, lastly, it increases alertness, which might sound really good, except that that kind of um, can hype us up from uh, a standpoint of, you know, putting us in that um, fight or flight mode, right? So um, it kind of puts us in that fight or flight, but then that ultimately will lead us to crash. It can also lead to anxiety and depression. I'm sure a lot of this on this slide is not surprising to you, but it's really important that we talk about this because these are the things that, um, so many of us feel like, again, like this is just how life is. And I have to be honest with you and tell you that uh, it doesn't need to be that way. And before we move on, I just want to recognize that um, I have this uh, statistic down on the bottom that 95% of illness is caused by stress. So um, even if it's not necessarily impacting you from a health standpoint right now, chronic stress in your life is going to hit you down the road if you don't deal with it. Reason number four, your diet. Um, and I have some really great pictures on this slide of what I like to call the corporate unwellness culture. So probably if you work in an office, and especially now with 
uh, a lot of the uh, Obamacare requirements and things like that. You know, you're talking about corporate wellness a lot more, right? Maybe you're talking about uh, having a, a weight loss club at work or, you know, putting in your daily steps or, you know, speaking with a coach or, you know, whatever your um, corporation is putting forward for you. Um, but in, in a lot of ways, uh, and I work with a lot of companies now going in and doing health talks and stuff like this, and I see this firsthand, that you know corporations are not walking their talk. Uh, they are promoting this wellness, um, you know, corporate wellness, but then on the flip side, you know, they are, um, you know, putting demands on you to, to work these really extensive hours or to finish unrealistic projects and unrealistic deadlines. And then, you know, when you're having work meetings, instead of, you know, having, let's say a salad bar or something that's healthy, that's healthy, uh, you're getting pizza and you're getting donuts. Why? Because that stuff is cheap and they know people will eat it. So, you know, they're really just feeding this cycle instead of uh, promoting the uh, the wellness that they're really talking about. And it can be really confusing, I feel like, from um, the standpoint of being somebody who's working in a company that is doing this kind of double service, right? I know I see it all the time and, and people are really often confused. Um, I was at, I can't, I can't say the company name, but I was at a pretty big company doing a talk on uh, stress and nutrition and I walked into their conference room and there were cookies and cake and uh, donuts and Gatorade and soda. So just, you know, sugar across the board. And it was like, you know, what am I doing here if this is what you're going to provide your employees to kind of keep them going at work? You know, it's just incongruent with the message that you're putting forth. Uh, next is, you know, this idea of living in kind of this processed food culture and living in this uh, time of really needing to eat for convenience. You know, if you are a woman who, who works, and I'm sure almost everyone on this call is, um, you don't have hours a day to spend slaving around in the kitchen. And so eating has to be of convenience for you. What I want you to recognize is that uh, eating for convenience does not mean that your dinner has to come out of a box. It does not mean that you have to uh, grab a cliff bar on the way to work in the morning because you didn't have time to eat breakfast. Uh, there is a better way to do this. And um, there is an easier way when, and a more supportive way when you're actually eating real food. Okay. Next, you know, we've already kind of gone over it so i'm not going to talk too much in detail about the idea of sugar addiction and, and using caffeine as fuel and really what that does to us from an energetic standpoint or a nutritional standpoint um, i think we all can recognize that we are um, over sugared and over caffeinated as a culture and this is um, a huge problem energetically and you know from our waistlines our waistlines are telling us that the way that we're eating and the way that we're taking care of ourselves is not sufficient and lastly, and possibly, you know, most important is that, you know, we are just bombarded with nutrition information. I often talk to women, really smart, really educated women who say, you know, I'm just confused. There's so much conflicting information out there and everyone is out there telling you that their diet is the diet that's going to help you, you know, whether it is you know, superfoods or eating paleo or vegan, you know, no fat, low fat, Atkins, uh, Weight Watchers, you know, whatever it might be, there's so much conflicting information out there. And it can be really, really challenging to know what is, uh, what is right, what the heck it all means, and what does it mean for you? You know, what are you actually supposed to do with all of that information? And, um, I have found that from a nutritional standpoint, it is good to keep things simple. You know, focus on eating real whole foods and eating more real whole foods than, than not. So replacing some of these processed foods with whole foods and um, that really in and of itself can go a long way. Reason number five, you're not relaxing. So, Again, we're in this culture that 
forces us, especially the work culture, it forces us to be constantly plugged in. You know, um, I, so I'll tell you a little bit of a story of about myself. A lot of people don't know that I still do some consulting work on the side. So again, I totally get where you guys are coming from. Um, but I was talking to my boss at this consulting gig and he was like, um, telling asking me if i'd synced my email to my phone and i was like uh no i didn't i work for you you know 20 hours a week i'm i'm not accessible to you full time uh if you want me to be accessible to you full time you can pay me for that uh but there was this expectation that i would just be constantly plugged in and constantly available and responding to emails whenever they needed me and that is uh the rule not the exception right but that that kind of mentality doesn't serve us we need to be disconnected to really be able to come back fresh for work whether that is you know turning your phone off at night or you know turning it off on the weekends whatever that might be for you setting you know specific hours where you'll be available for work and specific hours where you will designate for yourself or for your family so Maybe that means you turn off your, your work phone at 7 p.m. at night and you don't check it again until the next morning. Um, you know, unless you are a doctor or um, the president, <laughs> you know, there is not a whole lot that you probably need to do between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. And, um, you know, I won't claim to know what you do or, or know the work that you do, but, um, you know, take a realistic look at, when you're plugged in and see you know when you can disconnect because you absolutely need that that time away to come back fresh um so many of us feel like we don't have support or we don't have accountability and i felt like that myself for a really long time like i was kind of going at this alone you know i'd mentioned that i felt really judged by my family and by my friends when i was trying to figure this out and i had to go out and really find my own support system so i had hired a coach and i uh, had connected with some people online who were really doing the same thing that i was doing and you know that wasn't something that was there for me. It was something that I had to create for myself. Now, I want you to recognize here that you are 100% worth taking care of. I fully believe that you cannot give what you need to give to the world if you're not taking care of yourself first. You uh, are your number one. Even if you're a mom and even if you have kids, uh, you are number one. You have to take care of yourself to be able to be the best mom. And I know that that's an argument with so many, um, with so many women and so many moms. Like I put myself, I put my family first. Blah blah blah. Um, that's not serving you and it's not serving them. And it's actually giving them a really bad example of uh, how to care for themselves. And, you know, it's a really vicious cycle that we get into when we start to not take care of ourselves and, and not uh, support ourselves in the way that we need to. What I want you to recognize is that if you fix one thing, you really, you start to fix everything. It is all connected. It's all a piece of the same puzzle. And, um, you know, it's these small changes that really have the biggest impact down the road. So, you know, if, and relaxing <laughs> can be a really easy thing for you to be able to, to fix and to make an impact in your life. And again, lastly, you know, you need that time to reset, to come back fresh. Um, to be disconnected and to have those kind of creative ideas and, and to allow yourself to, to relax and for things to come to you instead of constantly feeling on all the time. Again, that leads us to stress, that leads us to, um, you know, feeling exhausted, all connected. Can we see that now that these are all pieces of the same puzzle? And I love this quote that I have here on the right. So I'm just going to read it out loud to you guys. Uh, do what makes you happy. Be with those who make you smile and laugh as much as you breathe. You know, if we all lived by those, um, by those tenants, I think that we would be um, in a much better place if we really were able to, to disconnect and, and to live like that. So how can we fix this? 
I have this quote here uh, by Maya Angelou up on the top. If you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. And I want you to recognize that if you don't change now, that nothing will change. If you don't decide to make a change for yourself, everything in your life is gonna stay the same. So if you're unhappy, you're gonna continue to be unhappy. And probably you're gonna get more unhappy because you're just going through the same thing over and over again. And that's absolutely where I was. I totally get that. I totally get that change is scary and it's uncomfortable and we can feel alone or lonely. But if you don't make those changes, you're just gonna be stuck in that same place you know what is it gonna feel like a year from now if you reflect back on this webinar and you say you know I, I watched that webinar and I wanted to make a change but I didn't and a year has gone by and I'm in this same crappy job where no one gives a shit about all the hours that I'm working where um, you know I just keep putting on weight because I don't have time to exercise I don't have time to care for myself and oh yeah I don't have time to date because I'm working all the time you know what how are you going to feel in a year if you're saying that to yourself? I also want to ask you, what legacy are you leaving behind? So, so often women tell me, you know, I'm working so hard because of my family or because of my husband or my boyfriend, or um, I'm working so hard because in, uh, in a few years when I have a family, I don't want to work that hard. Um, but you know, if you are doing this for them, um, are you really, you know, what what example are you are you giving for them to look at? And also, you know, doing this is that taking is it actually taking you away from people being able to spend time with them? You know, what legacy are you leaving behind? Really think about that. Next, I want to talk about this idea of intentional balance. And I have balance in quotes here because I know that it can be um, such a polarizing word. And, uh, you know, I find that a lot of women use it to describe what they want, but that they're also frustrated because they feel like it doesn't really summarize what it is that they want for themselves or that it's maybe been something that they've kind of been told to want, you know, but it's kind of like a corporate buzzword to want that work-life balance. And I want to share with you that um, I believe that, you know, balance is something that you create for yourself and it doesn't look the same for any of us. Um, and it's not about all things being equal. It's about really understanding what your values and what your priorities are in, in your life and creating your lifestyle around that and being intentional about that. Now, so many times uh, people tell me that oh, they just don't have time to do one more thing. You know, they can't imagine making a change because they just don't have time. And I want to ask you, you know, is time a valid excuse? And again, let's go back to that example of a year from now. You know, what what if your life looks exactly the same? That year is going to pass anyway. So do you want it to pass doing exactly the same thing that you're doing right now? Or do you want to use that year to change your life and to be a completely different person this time next year? Uh and lastly, it is um, about dropping the guilt around um, not working enough, not being a good enough spouse, not being a good enough parent, not being a good enough woman, not taking enough care of ourselves. Dropping the guilt about all the shit that's happened before and taking action now to move yourself forward. Let's forget about where we've been and let's think about moving forward. So perfect segue, let's talk about the path forward. All right, so I've got kind of four steps here and this is the foundation of really the work that I do and uh, the work that I think most women need to do to really change their lives. So the first step is all about alignment. It's getting clarity on what it is that you really want from your life. You know, what are your values? What are your priorities? What are your dreams? We've been told to want certain things for so long that we've lost sight of what we want for ourselves. That is absolutely the case for me. 
And I know it's the case for so many of you too. So we really get clear on, on what it is that you want. Uh, we work on your mindset. So this is huge. You know, we talked about stress being uh, part of um, being all about perspective or a lot about perspective. And so a lot of that comes down to working on your mindset and being able to, you know, flip that stress stress. But I can't talk flip that stress switch off at the end of the day It's about putting you in control instead of Allowing yourself to just keep going through the motions of of this path that you've been on and that you've put, been put on by other people Next we move into that support and repair so you get the accountability that you really need and we start to talk about supportive nutritious foods those superfoods energizing and grounding foods so foods that really make your mood and I'm not talking about you know rock star energy drinks or um, sugar covered donuts you know I'm talking about real foods that can change your moods and also some key supplements that I think all women should be taking to really support our busy, hectic lifestyles. Next is streamlining. And again, I ta had talked about this with uh, stress management as well. This is all about simplifying your life. It's about creating structure and it's about time management for focus and productivity. So really getting, um, getting really good about limiting those distractions and being productive in those you know eight hours or ten hours or however many hours you're at work so that when you come home from work you can shut off and really enjoy your time right and I have some really great tools that I will teach you that um, go through the, that time management stuff. And then the last is relaxing. So, you know, that last step where we're constantly plugged in and we're just feeling exhausted by it. Um, so we really talk about how you can incorporate relaxation in your life. Even if you are that type A go-getter overachiever, there is still a time and a place for relaxing. So we'll look at mindfulness and meditation as a tool for you to use on a daily basis to create that for yourself. We'll talk about different grounding um, exercises, a gratitude practice, yoga, and, and different healing that, that you can use to really uh, create that relaxation in your life. So I want to pause here for a second. I want to ask you, what do you really want for your life? So many of us feel like we don't have a choice and that we're just stuck in the life that we have right now. But I want you to recognize that you always have a moment of choice. You can choose to stay where you're at right now and to make no changes, or you can choose to take the bull by the horns and make a difference for yourself. So I want to ask you, are you important enough? Are you worth your own time and your own energy? Because uh, that's what we're really talking about, right? Do you value yourself enough to put in the time and the effort to learn how to take care of yourself? So I want to talk a little bit about my approach. I don't believe that there is a one size fits all. You know, I talked a little bit about this when we talked about nutrition, how uh, there's so much information and everyone's saying, I have the perfect solution for you. Go on the paleo diet and you will be feeling your life will just be so much better. Uh, I don't believe that there's the case. I believe that there are um, some things that all of us can absolutely do to improve our lives. But there are some unique circumstances and situations that are very specific to you. So my approach is tailored to you and what you are wanting and what you want to create in your life. It is holistic, meaning you know I don't just talk to you about nutrition or I don't just talk to you about exercise. We talk a lot about career, we talk about health, and we talk about lifestyle. And we talk about making changes and strategies and um, has forward in all of those areas and how those three areas can really be in unison with each other, not, you know, competing against each other for your time and your energy. I describe my work as high touch, low stress. And when we talk about not having enough time, 
often coaching can feel like something, just something else on your to-do list, right? But I want you to recognize this is not about giving you something else to do. It's about teaching you how to live better so that you can enjoy your life more. All right now, I want you to imagine what it would feel like if you were in control. If you felt like you were in control of your career, if you felt like you were in control of your life, in control of your weight, and in control of your energy. You know, again, you know, I shared this before. I believe you deserve to feel the best that you can every single day. You deserve to feel feet feel free and you deserve to feel vibrant. This is not something that, you know, multimillionaires or um, CEOs like Sheryl Sandberg, you know, who have like all this help in the world, you know, that they get to feel. You get to feel this too. I believe it is your right, uh, but you know, you have to put in uh, the effort to make that happen for yourself. Now, I want you to get the personal support you need to make healthy, happy, and successful your new normal. Because getting support allows you to gain control and build the, the life of your dreams. And that's what we all really want at the end of the day, right? And I want you to really think about this for a second. And I know that, you know, sometimes some of us can feel like this is a step back or, you know, that asking for help makes us look weak. It absolutely does not. I think that asking for help makes you look very, very smart, first of all, but also, you know, not asking for help. Where has that got you? It's got you feeling unhealthy and unhappy and possibly hating your job and hating your life. Uh, so what would getting support look like for you? What would being healthy, happy, and successful look like for you? Right? Think about that for a second. So I want to share my coaching with you. I offer right now a six-week coaching program, and it is a, again, holistic uh, lifestyle program. Each week we will meet for um, 50 minutes and you'll have a one-on-one -on -one call with me. And I have um, a basic agenda outlined here. And again, this really is tailored to each woman that comes to me. So if you, uh, let's say, are doing really good in your career, we might focus more on some of the things that you're struggling with. But in general, you know, these first few weeks we talk about alignment and then the next few weeks, we talk about that um, support. And then we talk about simplifying and streamlining. And lastly, about relaxing and, and building that mindset. So those four steps that we talked about before, it's all built into these six weeks. I have crafted this six-week program specifically for driven women because A, I know you want results and I know you want them quickly. B, I know you don't have a lot of time. And C, I know that if you show up, that you're gonna do the work to change your life. So we don't necessarily need to spend, you know, 20 sessions together. We can spend six really focused weeks together and really get you seeing a difference. And that is um, my goal and my hope for you. So if this is something that you're curious about and if you're like, what, you know, what is this all about? I want to invite you to book a free discovery call with me. And I know people are always like, what is a discovery call? This is really, uh, I would describe it as a holistic assessment. So what we do is uh, we really look at, you know, it's an opportunity for you and I to connect one-on-one -on -one, and it's really for me to get to learn about you. So, you know, where are you right now in terms of your career, in terms of your life, in terms of your health, in terms of your relationships, and where is it that you want to go? Also, you know, what is keeping you from getting there? This isn't salesy or sleazy. It's not gimmicky. I'm not going to, you know, try to get you um, to buy, um, you know, any any pills or, or buy into the paleo diet or anything like that. Uh, this is really a chance for us to connect and for us to learn more about each other. It's also an opportunity for you to get your questions answered. Uh, so if you have one on one questions that you're not uh, comfortable to ask in a, in a group dynamic, you absolutely 
can ask them on this call with me. So if you're interested in a discovery call, I want you to just right now, while you are here, go to stephaniecookwellness.com slash discovery call and go ahead and book your call for uh, this upcoming week so that we have an opportunity to connect. And I say do it now because I know we're all really busy and I don't want you to forget. So go ahead and book it. And as we uh, leave, or as I'm ending the call and open up the Q&A, uh, I want to close with this. So the life you want is yours for the taking, but first you have to define it and then you have to create it. And this really, uh, I think, is the essence of what I do in my work and what I want to help you do in your own life. So defining what it is you want and creating it. I absolutely think it's something that is totally feasible for you and I'm excited to help you get there. So with that, let's see, I think I just ended our screen share. Yep, here I am. It got dark out and uh, let's see if I can figure out how to open up this Q&A. Okay, cool. So uh, if you have any questions, you can submit them over on the right side. It looks like I'm a little bit grainy and I'm knocking my computer all around like a nutball. Um, go ahead and submit your questions and I will answer them. I have a couple of questions that were asked to me via uh, email. So I'm going to ask those questions now. And the first question was about, you know, when you feel like so many things are out of control in your life or like there's so many things that you want to correct. And even on this webinar, we talked about a lot of things that uh, are causing us to be unhealthy and unhappy. How, you know, what do we do first? And I always say, you know, the first step is getting that support system. That for me was what was holding me back for so long. I was fearful. I was feeling like I wasn't good enough. And uh, once I got people in my corner who are going to support me to make those changes, it made a world of difference. So whether that's me, whether that's somebody you meet online, whether it's your spouse, whether it's friends, you know, get that support system before you start making changes. Because uh, I'm not gonna lie, change can be really hard and it can be really challenging. So um, absolutely, you need that support when you start to make these changes for yourself. All right, that is question number one. The next question that I got via email is, um, sorry, where did I put it? Shoot. Okay, um, the next question is, you know, we talk a lot about stress being about your mindset and what do you do when you're surrounded by negative people all the time? And um, I think this is a really great question, especially if you work in an office, which again, I'm sure a lot of people do. Uh, you know, I, someone described to me this week that an office can feel like a war zone. You know, everyone is always hyped up and stressed and there's just like negativity running rampant. And how do you protect yourself against that? Uh, there are a few things that I absolutely recommend. Uh, the first is affirmations. I talked to you guys about affirmations the last few weeks about kind of building up your positive mindset, right? And the next is if you know that there are specific people that are really negative and really difficult to be around, you know, cut those people out. Spend as little time with those people as possible because uh, working with those people or being around those people is not serving you in any way. And I know in a work environment that can be really tough, but you know, maybe it means that you don't go to lunch sometimes with coworkers because there's a negative person there. Or maybe it means that, you know, you sit next to somebody else in meetings or whatever it might be, you know, build some space between you and that person. Remember that you are the most important person in your life. It's not about making other people happy. So if there's somebody that's negative and dragging you down, create some space there. All right, uh, those were the two questions that I had via email. I don't see any other questions coming in, so I'm gonna end the call here. I wanna thank you guys for being on. We went a little bit over an hour, so I apologize for that, but it's been fantastic to have you here, and I can't wait to uh, see you all again soon, okay? Have a great Sunday night, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.